What's up everybody? Justin here to do my Ring of Honor ROH War of the Worlds. Well, Ring of Honor in New Japan Pro Wrestling War of the Worlds 2017 pay-per-view review. Just got done watching a pay-per-view. I got it on pay-per-view. If you didn't get it on pay-per-view, hopefully you got it on the Fight TV app. That's also a good option. If you don't have cable or satellite TV. So anyways, I decided to pay for the pay-per-view because I want to support the hard-working wrestlers in Ring of Honor. They deserve my money. I, they don't deserve for people to steal the pay-per-view and try to watch it for free. If you did try to steal it and watch it for free... That's your prerogative. So I'm going to have to get up here for a minute. Because my cat wants to get out of the door. Out of the room. So I'm back. Here we go. With. My War of the Worlds 2017 review. And sorry, I'm distracted. I just have MLB Network on and an Empire got drilled right in the throat. Like right here. Right under his mask, he got drilled with a fastball and he went down immediately. In a San Francisco Giants in Cincinnati Reds game. Empire went down right away. I hope the guy's okay. Not that any of you probably care, but if you got MLB Network, check out the highlights. They'll show it. So up first was, on War of the Worlds, up first was a four-corner survival match. It wasn't called... For, Four corner survival. They just ended up calling it a four way match. It was Silas Young taking on Bobby Fish, taking on from New Japan Pro Wrestling Koshida, and taking on Dalton Castle. I predicted Koshida would win. He lost. Dalton Castle wins. It's a pretty good matchup. Good kickoff to the pay per view. I enjoyed it. Up next was. Let me see here. I wrote numbers down of the matches. So they're in order. Frankie Kazarian up against Hangman Page of the Bullet Club. I'm not sure if Hangman Page is still in the Bullet Club, but I think he is. So Hangman Page, Frankie Kazarian. This was like a grudge match, and it was pretty damn good. So, who wins? As I said, it's pretty good. Hangman Page, Hangman Page wins. He held the ropes. Referee didn't see it. That's how he won. And early in the match, he hit a shooting star press. That was pretty impressive. So Hangman Page wins by holding the ropes against Frankie Kazari. Up next was the three-way tag team matchup, triple threat tag team match. So, Japan's team of Evil and Sadata, or Sa Sanato, or whatever. The Japan team up against Chris Sabin and his partner, Jonathan somebody. They're the team of Search and Destroy. I don't know why Alex Shelley could not team with Chris Sabin. He must be injured or something. And they were against War Machine. Now this was damn impressive. War Machine looked awesome. And War Machine is the current IWGP Tag Team Champions. And they looked awesome. Because War Machine, Raymond Rowe, that guy, picked up both of the other teams, both of them, and hit a double. A double overhead belly to belly suplex. It was a damn impressive. Raymond Roll picked up two guys, threw them over his head, and dropped them on their heads for a suplex. It was awesome. That guy's a beast in War Machine. 
is Raymond Rowe. The other guy's a beast too. So that was damn impressive. Double overhead belly to belly suplex. Not many could do that. Brock Lesnar could probably do it. Braun Strowman could probably do that, but not many others. So, who wins it? The three-way tag team match. War Machine wins, and they looked damn good and damn impressive. As I said, they're the IWGP Tag Team Champions. And they're still a part of Ring of Honor. They're a very good team. I am a big fan of War Machine. Up next, we had... Will Offspray, or Offspring, whatever, you know who the guy is. This was the fourth match of the pay-per-view, Will Offspray, or if, I don't know if that's how you pronounce the guy, his name, who cares, you know who he is. Will up against Jay White. This match was damn good. It was very good. It was fast-paced, it was hard-hitting, it, it was awesome. Jay White and Will, they brought the house down at the, I think, Manhattan Center, they were calling it. Or Hammerstein Ballroom. I think it was Hammerstein Ballroom. I think Manhattan Center is a different building in, in the same building. Anyways, the Manhattan Center is the building that Monday Night Raw debuted in in 93. It's a little bit smaller then uh, Hammerstein Ball. So Will Ospreay, Jay White, they went at it. They destroyed each other. It was awesome. It was a hard-hitting match. Uh, Will Ospreay at one time did a cartwheel or handspring cartwheel backflip over the top. He got caught. And then he slammed him. He caught him. Jay White caught him. Fear voices outside. I apologize. Got my window open. People are yelling, acting like dumbasses. Because they're probably drunk. They're just being loud. Anyways, it's Friday night, people. A lot of loud people walk past my house. Anyways, I live in the city. So, Jay White, he did like a corkscrew or handspring backflip over the top. Jay White caught him on the outside, slammed him. Like, head, back, neck first on the ring apron. That was damn impressive. That was a crazy spot. What else? I'm trying, looking at some notes I have on the match. It was just it was very good. Jay White, Will Ospreay was really good. If you didn't see them pay-per-view, try to find the match on YouTube or something and watch it. So then after the match, the winner is Will Ospreay. I predicted Will would win, and he did win. And then after the match, Punishment Martinez attacks. Beats the hell out of Will Ospreay. Punishment Martinez attacks. I believe he attacked both guys. I'm not sure if he attacked Jay White. I don't remember, but I know he attacked Will. Because Will Ospreay on the Ring of Honor Twitter account, he cut a promo. He had a bunch of bruises on his back. Cut a promo against Punishment Martinez for attacking him. So up next we had the first title match of the night. Four titles were on the line. Yes, four titles. So the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles were on the line. The champions, the Briscoe brothers, the Briscoes, and Bully Ray. Bully Ray, they're pointing into the crowd where the Briscoes are pointing up into the crowd. And out of the crowd came Bully Ray in his hometown in New York City. He got in the ring, got in the mic, said, We're in the jungle, baby. And stuff like that. Said, What's up, New York? We're in the jungle. And their opponents are about to die. Something like that. He was basically ripping off the lyrics of Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, Everybody Knows That Song. If you don't know that song, I don't know where you've been living. Under a rock for a long time. So the six-man tag team champions, Bully Ray and the Briscoes, defending against Trent Beretta, Rocky Romero, Rapunzel Vice is their team name, and their partner was Gatto. From New Japan Pro Wrestling. So I had Trent Beretta, Rick, 
Rocky Romero and Gato winning. They did not win. This match got pretty extreme, got pretty hardcore. I don't know if it got that extreme, but it got hardcore because it was no DQ. Before the match started, the stipulation was no DQ. Pretty good. I uh, just saw my Brewers won tonight. That uh, that makes me happy. Defeating the Mets. That's good because I didn't watch the game because I was watching Ring of Honor War of the Worlds pay-per-view. So, during the six-man tag team titles, at one point, uh, Trent Beretta, I believe, was carrying Rocky Romero, or it could have been the other way around, and they were running into the corner into one of the Briscoes. But one of the Briscoes had a chair and he threw it at both of them. And it just smashed both of them in the face. They both went down. That was a pretty awesome spot. One of the Briscoes throwing a chair, knocking down Rapunzel, Rapunzel Vice. That was a pretty cool spot. So your winners. And still, Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions, Bully Ray and the Briscoes. That was a good decision, good booking decision. I like that. They're still the champions. And Bully Ray, his experience will just really help the Briscoes. They don't really need any help because they're veterans themselves. So up next we had, let's see what was next. The sixth match of the night was for the Ring of Honor, another title match. For the Ring of Honor TV Championship, the villain Marty Skull. Defending against Matt Seidel. I guess Impact Wrestling is letting Matt Seidel work on a Ring of Honor live pay-per-view. I don't know why they do that, but I guess they're letting him. They weren't... They tried actually uh, suing Ring of Honor. Or not suing, but threatening cable companies. The last Ring of Honor pay-per-view that the Hardy Boys were on. The Hardys were on it. The last pay-per-view, I think, was in March for Ring of Honor. I think it was the 15th anniversary was the last pay-per-view that I watched. I think it was in March. Or, had to be in March. Had to be in March. Anyways, uh, Impact Wrestling sent a letter threatening cable companies, threatening DISH satellite companies, DISH Network or whatever their name is, DISH TV. I don't have them. I have Direct TV. Anyways. Impact threatened cable companies and Dish TV or some company called Dish threatened them. And I believe they even threatened Direct TV. If they show the pay-per-view with the Hardys match that they're going to be sued or something. Or that Impact is going to take legal action against Ring of Honor and cable companies. I don't think they ever did take legal action because... Uh, DirecTV actually showed the pay-per-view and showed the Hardys match because I watched it. But I guess Dish, I think they're called Dish Network. And now your gunshots going off near my house. That's always fun. Anyways, <laughs> back to my review. So I think Dish pulled the Ring of Honor 15th anniversary pay-per-view because they're scared of Impact suing them or something. That's sad. <clears throat> so, Marty Skull against Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor Wrestling. Wrestling's Matt Seidel. And he's returning to Ring of Honor because I guess he couldn't come back to Ring of Honor for a year or something because when he went to Japan... For Ring of Honor or went to Japan to do a tour. Matt Seidel was actually banned from Japan for I don't know how long. Might be banned for life. For wrestling. I don't know. But he's banned just because they found pot. That he had pot on him. That's nothing. Doing Having that on you is nothing in my opinion. And I don't know why Japan is so... So against somebody having pot. They could have just took it from him, gave, gave him a big fine or something. They didn't have to ban him from the whole country. I mean, good God, they're uptight for doing that. That ain't right. 
to ban a wrestler from a country just because he had pot on him. That is not right in my opinion. So Matt Seidel, this was a pretty good match for the TV title. It was damn entertaining. Marty Skull, the villain, at one point during the match, grabbed his fingers, went, popped them out, ripped them apart. That is a sick-ass, awesome move. Awesome heel move that he does. Raven used to do that also. You just grab fingers and pull them apart like he's breaking f your fingers. That's an awesome move. Awesome spot, in my opinion. Obviously, he didn't break Matt Seidel's fingers. I really, really, really doubt he would do that. So the te And then, as I say, he did that broken finger spot. And the villain, Marty Skull, was super over. He was really over in the NYC. Really over with Ring of Honor fans. The guy's super over. So he's a TV champion for a reason. He's pretty damn good. So... I Here's a finish. Shooting star press by Matt Seidel. The knees come up. Marty Skull gets his knees up. Knees hit Matt Seidel. He's injured, holding his ribs, holding his abdominal, his chest. So he's injured from the knees coming up after the shooting star press. And then after that, the villain, Marty Skull, locks in a submission. On Matt Seidel, Matt Seidel has to tap out. Marty Skull wins and is still your Ring of Honor TV champion. The villain is still the TV champion. Up next we had Adam Cole. No, no, no. Up next we had the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. The Young Bucks defending part of the Bullet Club. The Young Bucks defending the tag titles against Boo Shot. Boo. Damn, I can't pronounce his name. Buatashi, I think Butashi or something like that. The guy had a mask on. The guy's a great talent. I wish I could pronounce his name. Bu, Buashi or something like that. B-U-S-H-I. Not good with pronouncing names that are Japanese. Right. So Bu, Buashi, I'll just call him. In NATO, he's a current NATO is the current, uh, NATO, NATO, I'll just call him NATO. You know who the guy is. He's the current IWGP Intercontinental Champion. They made a great team. They gave the Young Bucks a hell of a fight. They were very good. They took, they took the Young Bucks to the limit, in my opinion. They really took them to the limit. Really good tag title match. And during it, you had... At the same time, Bu Buashi was laid out near the turnbuckles, and one of the young bucks hit a 450, and the other young buck was on the man and hit a backflip and 450 at the same time on Buashi. That was awesome. And then we had, after that, we had missed. I don't know where the miss came from. I didn't miss that spot. But we had missed going the eyes of the young, one of the young bucks missed. He got missed in the eyes, in the face. He was blinded. He couldn't see. He was selling it. He ends up, I think it was Matt Jackson. He got blinded with a mist. So Matt Jackson ended up super kicking. Might have been Nick. I think it was Nick Jackson. I can't tell them apart. They look like twins in my opinion. But either Matt or Nick got blinded, super kicked his brother. And then he, he turns around, ref touched him or something. He turns around, super kicks a ref because he's blinded. That's pretty funny. That was a good, funny spot. So then after that, we had them, the Young Bucks hit their finisher where he's holding him up in a tombstone position. The other one does a springboard, slams his head to the mat. I don't know the name of the finish. I'll just call it. Their old finish name for that used to be called the Indie Taker. They hit their finish. The Young Bucks hit their finish. The Indie Taker. And one, two, three, Young Bucks win and retain the tag titles. Up next we had... In, in my predictions, I... Um, who did I have winning? In my predictions, I think... I think I had the Young Bucks retain. So Young Bucks still your tag champions in Ring of Honor. Up next we had Adam Cole. No, we didn't. Wait. 
Yeah, I'm next at Adam Cole against what's his name? Tin Tahashi. Tahashi. Guy's a legend. Guy's a seven time, former seven time IWGP world champion. Tohashi against Adam Cole. Again, if I pronounce the new Japan Pro Wrestler's name, if I pronounce his name wrong, I apologize. But he was up against Adam Cole. He's a former seven-time IWGP champion. This was pretty entertaining. This was pretty damn good. Adam Cole was coming out like this, down to the ring, going like this to the fans. Anyways, he's still Bullet Club, even though on Ring of Honor TV, he left Cody in a tag match. But that had come to bite him in the ass. Adam Cole... <laughs> That would come back to bite him in the ass that he left Cody. Because after this match, something really big happened with the Bullet Club. Anyways, Adam Cole loses to New Japan against Ring of Honor. New Japan wins. Adam Cole loses. And I predicted New Japan would, that their talent would defeat Adam Cole. I predicted that would happen. Go back, watch my Ring of Honor War of the Worlds. 2017 predictions. Some of them I got right. I think I got more wrong than I got right. But who cares. So. During this. As I said. Adam Cole. Tohashi was very good. It was damn good. And he hit a frog splash. On Adam Cole. And that's how he finished him. With a frog splash. One, two, three. So I'm next. And after. Uh. Yeah, after the match. After the Adam Cole match, right away the fans started chanting in NYC. They started chanting, thank you, Cole. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, Cole. Something Michael Cole will never hear. The fans chanting, thank you, Cole. Something Michael Cole will never hear the fans chant ever at him. So anyways, Adam Cole getting thank you, Cole chants because I think his contract is up with Ring of Honor by now, or tonight was the last night of it. He's rumored to go to WWE. I don't know if he will, but if he does, I predict Adam Cole will show up at NXT TakeOver Chicago in the front row, in a suit, in my opinion. So thank you, Cole Chance. Young Bucks come out, and Young Bucks and Adam Cole all are hugging, all are hugging it out are all emotional, hugging in the middle of the ring. And then the lights go out. The lights go out. The crowd is pretty damn excited. Marking out popping with the lights out. Because we know a surprise is happening. Every time a light, the lights go out in a wrestling pay-per-view or wrestling show, we know something big is happening and a surprise is about to come. So the lights go back on. And on this screen, cutting a promo, is Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega, part of the Bullet Club, cutting a promo about Adam Cole. Saying the thank you Cole chance. Saying he doesn't, you don't deserve that Adam Cole. And your time is done. That's basically what he, he said. He said your time in the Bullet Club is done. So then the lights go back on. And uh, before the lights went back on, the villain, Marty Skull, was standing next to Kenny Omega in his gear. And that weird mask he wears with a giant nose. He, he was dressed up in his gear. The crowd popped. Right away when they saw the villain, the crowd marked out and popped next to Kenny Omega. The announcers, Kevin Kelly, they were trying to sell it. They were like... Where's Kenny Omega? Where is he talking from? Is he going to come out? Where is he? Is he in the arena? So lights go back on in the villain, Marty Skull, the reigning TV champion. Marty Skull's in the middle of the ring, staring at Adam Cole. Young Bucks attack Adam Cole. They hit him with double, double super kicks. And then Cole's laid out on his knees. Marty Skull takes his umbrella. Or some weapon. I think it was an umbrella. And he takes it and goes, just bashes Adam Cole in the side of the head with it. Or hit him on the top of the head. Bashed him in the head with his umbrella. So then Cole falls on the mat. He's laid out. He's out cold. And Marty Skull, the villain, takes his j big jacket off. 
trench coat takes it off and who what does he expose he exposes not a macho man shirt but a bullet club shirt so the villain is now bullet club baby and adam cole is no longer bullet club baby adam cole as i said is probably on his way out of ring of honor to go somewhere else either wwe nxt or maybe impact wrestling Adam Cole looked in great shape. The guy looked like he lost some weight. He's not as doughy. He used to be a, eh, not in great shape. But now the guy's skinnier and in better shape. So as I said, I predict Adam Cole will go to NXT. So Adam Cole, because of what they did to him, they kicked him out of the Bullet Club. I think he's done in Ring of Honor. Adam Cole had a great run. The guy had a great run, very good run in Ring of Honor. He was in the kingdom. He was part of the Bullet Club. He was a Ring of Honor world champion a couple times. Adam Cole had a great run in Ring of Honor. So thank you, Adam Cole. I hope you end up in WWE or NXT. Because there is where you can make, make the most money for yourself. So after that, as I said, the villain is a new member, Marty Skull, the newest member of the Bullet Club. So now we have the main event. The main event for the Ring of Honor World title, Christopher Daniels defending against Jay Lethal. And Daniels, by the way, is 46 years old. The guy looks, honestly, the guy looks like he's 36. He looks like he's 10 years younger. He's in great shape. He's still in his prime, in my opinion. So Daniels, I thought Daniels was really going to lose the world title. Because Daniels was putting through a table. And he wasn't getting up for a little bit. He could not get up and get in the ring. So I thought the ref was going to take a bump. That didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't. Because in main events... Too often, way too often, referees take bumps in main events and then interference happens. But that didn't happen. Uh, Daniels went through the table at ringside. Cody set it up. Daniels went through it. It was down to Cody and Jay Lethal. They were going at it for a while. I thought the Bullet Club was going to interfere and help Cody win the world title. But that did not happen. Will Cody ever be a Ring of Honor World Champion? Uh, I believe he will be. Next pay-per-view's best in the world. I believe Cody will take on Daniels. And Cody could win it at best in the world or final battle. And I believe Cody has also exclusively signed a contract to be in Ring of Honor. So he's not going to be going to Impact anymore. So here are some notes from the world title match. We had, as I said, Cody set up his table. Daniels went through it. So then, and then Cody hit a crossroads on Jay Lethal. Hit a crossroads. But Lethal kicked out. That was damn close. That was really close. Lethal almost lost. And Cody was almost a new world champion. But he kicked out at crossroads. Then after that, uh, Cody locks on a figure four on Jay Lethal. Somehow Daniels gets up and covers Cody. Or no, covered, uh, yeah, Daniels went on top of Cody. Jay Lethal said the figure four locked in, so he couldn't get up and break up the count, break up the pinfall. So Daniels covers Cody after the best moot sawed ever. And then Daniels is on top of Cody after the best moots out ever. One, two, three. While Cody does a figure four on Jay Lethal. That is a good finish. Innovative finish in my opinion. Daniels wins. Christopher Daniels still your Ring of Honor World Champion. The pay-per-view is good. War of the Worlds 2017. Pretty damn good pay-per-view. If I give it a rating of 1 to 10... I would rate this pay-per-view a 8. I really enjoyed it. Or at least, I don't know, the main event. The main event was only like, I think 15 minutes, maybe 16. Could have been longer, should have been longer. But they didn't start the main event until like 
uh, like 15, 16 minutes left in the pay-per-view. I'll give this uh, War of the Worlds, I'll give it a... I'll give it a 7.5. I enjoyed it. There were a lot of good matches. A lot of good wrestling. Ring of Honor promotes himself as having the best wrestling on this planet. And I agree. They're very good. Very entertaining. They have great talent under contract. They also have great talent from New Japan that comes into Ring of Honor. That works with Ring of Honor. And it was announced... Also, before the pay-per-view is announced, that New Japan Pro Wrestling, because they're trying to break into the United States and tour a lot in the U.S., they're trying to tour a lot with their stars and stuff like that. I believe on New Japan, they also have a service like WWE Network on their website. I believe you can order it and you can uh, order it and listen to English commentary if you want. Obviously, I don't know why you listen to the Japanese commentary unless you know Japanese. Because it, well, I've, I've watched a lot of matches that were in Japanese, but that's because I didn't have an option to listen to English in the past. But if you order New Japan's, uh, like WWE Network, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Network, I believe it's on their website. I don't have the website name in front of me. I don't know it off the top of my head. But if you order them, and if you order their network, and you can go back, I'm, I'm sure you can go back like 30 years and watch all their shows. You can listen to English commentary. So New Japan wants to break into the United States and make more money, do more touring, be like worldwide like WWE is. So New Japan Pro Wrestling has decided to create a New Japan Pro Wrestling United States Championship. And they're starting a tournament. And Jay Lethal has been named as one of the names from Ring of Honor. Jay Lethal will be in the New Japan Pro Wrestling U.S. title tournament. So that's pretty exciting news. Hope you enjoyed. My Ring of Honor War of the Worlds 2017 pay-per-view review. The next pay-per-view I think is in June. I think it's June. Is best in the world. Ring of Honor best in the world. I will be predicting that and doing a review on it. Hope you enjoyed this War of the Worlds review. Have a great weekend. And follow me on Twitter at WWE NXT Guy. And like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye for now everybody.